Hi, this is Billy Bean here with another segment of Truth by Billy Bean. At today's date, 9-21-2022, new. This is a new YouTube channel for me. I have a subscribe button in the lower right corner of my screen. Thanks for like, subscribe, and share. Episode 407, War is Upon Us. The Russian government okays war steps. And so we'll get into it. Some of my sources are God in the Bible, Patriot subscribers, Israeli News Live, uh, Scott Ritter, uh, Alex Christophero Plus. Okay. What happened uh, yesterday was that the, yeah, the Russian government. Okay, so on 920. 2022, the Russian government, it's called the Doma. Okay, they, so they passed legislation, and what it does is authorize uh, the Russian military to mobilize, call up, Activate additional troops, reserves. Also to implement martial law inside Russia where needed. So that's going on. They also uh, passed legislation to accept uh, the referendums uh, inside uh, Ukraine. We have Lonask, Donask, the Donbass area. We have Kherson. We have Zephyronista. Uh, here's Crimea. Uh, we have, yeah. Uh, so these four areas, we're going to have referendums September 23 to 27, which have been in the works to immediately become part of Russia. The uh, but the Russian government has to accept these uh, these areas as becoming part of Russia. And yesterday, the Russian government okayed this. As soon as the people vote, they are part of Russia. Now, I've put out that report. I notice it hasn't been picked up by other <laughs> sources yet. The Chinese troops are already coming in. 200,000. North Korean... 100,000. They're already crossing over from Russia into this area. Now, we have additional call-ups and the Russian government okayed the uh, Russian military then. They're going to call up reserves that are currently in the military. They're active reserves. And then uh, in certain occupations and then give them fresh, you know, refresh on their training. And they're calling up 300,000, which is about 1% of the current size of the uh, Russian military is 25 million. So they're doing that. They're also authorizing uh, the uh, uh, military to implement inside Russia where needed martial law. I guess martial law inside a nation goes along with preparing for war. Now, uh, uh, Stephen Benoon received some information from Russell uh, Bentley, who is a Texan Ukraine citizen living in Donetsk, who was interviewed by Regis Tremblay, who is an expat. Uh, U.S. citizen also living in Crimea, that just yesterday the Ukraine fired upon a cafe, just a civilian uh, cafe, civilians out having lunch and killed 11 adults and two children. And one of the reasons that's prompting these referendums now for Kherson, Zaporonista, Luhansk, Donetsk, is what's going on in Kharkiv. In Kharkiv, the, US, uh, the Russian military had withdrawn because it was no longer a strategic military objective, not being a significant supply route for Ukraine. So uh, 
Russia withdrew their forces there and drew in the Ukrainians and what the Ukrainians do when they go into an area is begin to kill Ukraine citizens who've accepted food or, or were just there and weren't fighting against the Russians uh, being in that area. This is uh, the Joint Chiefs of the U.S. military have acknowledged that they know that the Ukraine military assassinates its own soldiers and also kills civilians. So that's what we're dealing with. So that's going on now. So we have this. Uh, and part of the reason that the Russian government took this action is that the JB, the unelected uh, puppet uh, of the shadow U.S. government, uh, allegedly okayed, and he has no authority over any of the military, okayed the um, uh, giving of long-range missiles to Ukraine, which Ukraine could then use to hit Crimea or other Russian areas. It's uh, my understanding that these long-range missiles are already inside Ukraine. Now, uh, uh, all this is coming out, too, about what's going on inside Ukraine with regard to the bio labs that were operated, funded, and begun by the shadow U.S. government. There were no Ukraine citizens involved in the bio labs, only U.S. citizens under the shadow U.S. government and the shadow U.S. military. Okay, so they have documents proving the U.S., you know, began all these and that they were producing gain of function in their bio labs diseases and viruses designed to take out certain genetic lines like the Slavic people inside Ukraine who speak Russian as well as the Ukraine uh, bloodline. Yeah, they're, they're again and use migratory birds to uh, spread the virus. That was one technique that was being used. Okay. So now, uh, it's come to light now exactly why, um, and this was new information to Stephen Benoon that the shadow U.S. government and the shadow NATO was also making inside uh, Ukraine dirty bombs, and that's why they're so intent on getting the Zaporonista nuclear power plant back in their hands so that they can begin to release dirty bombs which are stored there. That would be the shadow U.S. government, the shadow U.S. military, and the shadow NATO. Okay, so now we have this. Uh, yeah, and they were also the U.S., shadow U.S. and the shadow NATO was also uh, experimenting on humans, genetic manipulation, and making super soldiers. So how evil can you be? Pretty evil, huh? Now this does not reflect on the American people, the Ukraine people, the Slavic people, the Russian people. No, these psychopaths are a shadow group. Yeah, that's right. All right, now, uh, Stephen is saying, yeah, so Russia is it, they call it a partial mobilization and they're going to uh, mobilize 300,000 uh, individuals who are currently in the Russian military, refresh them on their training. They will go to the front line, which is something like uh, 1,200 kilometers or about 900 miles. Okay. And uh, Stephen Benoon is reporting that uh, uh, individuals who are still, still part of the West or Western assets are rushing out of Russia. They are going to Finland. Now, Scott Ritter, Marine, a retired military analyst, is bringing this information out that President Putin... Uh, yeah, the West is bringing in those long-range missiles there, uh, and they want to activate those dirty nukes against Russia. So Russia is mobilizing their military 
and uh, and then also voting in the uh, status of the people inside Ukraine of Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhzhia, and Kherson, who will now become part of Novo Russia, New Russia. Okay, and they're bringing in uh, additional equipment and military things to from Russia inside Donbass, and uh, they're bringing out that the. U.S. and NATO has brought in all this equipment and weapons to Ukraine and that they consider the West, uh, the US, shadow U.S. government and the shadow U.S., the shadow NATO to be the aggressors and Russia is stepping up to the plate to protect the motherland of Russia as well as Novo Russia, these new areas inside Ukraine. And uh, Russia is currently understands their status of fighting inside Ukraine to be fighting with the West. That would be the U.S. and NATO. All right. And the mobilization for the troops inside uh, Russia is today 921 immediate call up for the reserves all right now uh, so we have this going on and Russia specifically names uh, certain West areas Washington DC London and Brussels as being involved with the shadow U.S. military government and the shadow NATO and being opposed to Russia. So, um, yeah. All right, so, and Russia says that, uh, you know, they don't need to use dirty nukes. They have advanced weapons far beyond nukes. Okay, and I think I had hinted at that in a, earlier video all right so now we have alex christoforo he's a um, journalist inside greece and he's saying that uh, president putin and on the scott ritter video you can see president putin speaking the speech he gave to the russian people and then made public to other areas outside of russia so Okay, we have uh, Alex Christoforo. President Putin addresses the Russian people, partial mobilization, 300,000, signs the decree. And uh, yeah, that goes into effect yesterday, September 21. And there are, he also uh, advises the Russian people that Novo Russia, these new areas uh, inside Ukraine, will become part of Russia and about the referendums. Okay, and what's the killing of Ukraine civilians inside Kharkiv, also by the Ukraine military. Now, uh, yeah, and so... Yeah, and this is coming out from Alexander Christoforo, uh, who's kind of now inside Ukraine, ready to use are the long-range missiles. Okay, Shogu, um, part of the military uh, group in, in Russia, says that Russia fights NATO and the the special military operation had constrained the Russian military somewhat and they couldn't do certain things, but now that's been removed. They're moving to a declaration of war and they're going to mobilize 300,000 soldiers and he's giving some casualty counts. Now for Russia and for Ukraine, Russia does not include the casualties in the Donetsk People's Republic, the Luhansk People's Republic, nor the Wagner Group. It's only the Russian military. So killed to date is about 6,000. Ukraine 
count does not count. The mercenaries are the Azov, that nationalist quasi-military group inside Ukraine that actively practices the philosophy of World War II Germany. Does not count. The mercenaries are Azov. And the number is about 61,000. So we see killed in the Russian military, 6,000 killed in the Ukraine military, 61,000, according to the Russian Ministry of Defense. The partial mobilization inside the Russian reserves will be for certain skills. They will be refreshed on their training and then shipped to the front line. Russia has in their reserves 25 million, so this is calling up 300,000, which is 1 to 1.5 percent. And the Shogu, head of the Russian military, says inside Kiev, the West, the U.S. military, and NATO are directing the war inside Ukraine against Russia. Russia is at war with the West. That would be the shadow U.S. military, the shadow U.S. government, the shadow NATO. And that the West continues to supply Ukraine uh, with weapons, and they're out of weapons, including now long-range weapons designed to hit Crimea and parts of Russia. So we see uh, we war is upon us. So... We need to be in prayer for Russia, for Ukraine, for these individuals associated with the shadow NATO, the shadow U.S. government, the shadow U.S. military. Now we would ask a reasonable question, could this happen inside the United States, this mobilization, this move toward war? How could it? We don't have an elected government in place. So the majority of American citizens would not accept that, that authority coming out of the shadow U.S. government. So no, I, I would say no. What I would say is it's good to get cash and stock up on supplies and, and be in prayer. I love you and I'll see you soon.